In this video, we're going to have a look at making a beat and we can start off with a kind of a basic approach. I think it's good to approach this plugin with a kind of a layers approach. So if you just wanted to have a quick and easy way of getting some inspiration together with the audio you've recorded, this is how you do it. And that's what we're going to cover in this video. But there is a much more kind of complex way that you can get under the hood and really tweak the beats as well, which we're going to cover later. Okay, so we've still got that same audio I recorded before, the enthusiastic Pika audio. And what we can do on this main page here is create beats in a very intuitive way from the sounds that we've captured. So what happens is the files that we've recorded or imported get automatically sliced into one-shot samples. And then Live will basically create beats using a selection of those samples. Now we can actually choose different beats here using the Browse button. So we can simply click on here to choose different beat selections. And also we can use randomize as well. So let's actually just try some of these out. Now, something I just want to draw your attention to is you can either have the transport being controlled from within life itself by clicking on the play button here and this big play button here, or you can sync it to the DAW's transport. So when you press spacebar in this case in Logic, it will play and also it will now be synced to the project tempo. Now, this is much easier for the demonstration because I know that if I don't have it set up that way, I will keep on pressing Logic Space Bar through force of habit and nothing will play within life. So I'm going to leave that set up. Okay, so let's just browse some of these beats and see what it comes up with. Pretty cool. We can randomize from within here as well. So there's plenty of inspiration straight off just by going straight to the browse menu here. Okay, so at the top of this window here, we have the ability to kind of access our source file and we can play it from here as well. So pressing on this little play button More. allows us to hear what we were working with in the beginning, essentially what we recorded or imported. Press that again to stop it. You can also listen to each individual slice that's been recognized as a slice, like so. Now, what they've also done here is they've given similar kind of slices the same color. So you can hear all those blue ones sound kind of similar. So the kind of noisier ones here have got that kind of orange color to them. So as a general rule of thumb, bass sounds are going to be more yellowy red color and kind of higher frequency trebly sounds are going to be bluer, which kind of makes sense here because those go-go bells are, you know, the blue slices here. Now we also have the ability to denoise here as well. So we can kind of clean things up a little bit. I think for this, I want to have the noise in there because that's kind of part of the sound. So the quickest way to kind of find a start point for a beat is to use the randomize option down here. So every time you click randomize, you're going to get a brand new beat, which is going to be using a different selection of slices from your source file. As you can see here, it's changing up the slice configuration. Let's play some of these. Pretty cool. Now, if you go too far and you realize that you actually liked the previous one, you can use this undo button to go back as well. And remember, you can also browse beats using that browse button as well, as we looked at earlier. Now, as you see, when we randomize, the configuration updates here so we can see the slices that are being used. And also our central beat circle in the middle will update as well. And the colors will change to match the new beat. Now, we can actually control which slices are going to be used in each one of our beats. And we do that using the favorite and the skip option. So let's say we didn't want this guy in here. So we click on the little cross to skip it. And instead, we wanted this one. So we want this one too. Let's skip this one. Try this one instead. Try this one. So that way you can update the slices that are being used and remove the ones that you may find annoying or don't like the sound of. And if you favorite a slice, it's always going to be used in the beat. Now something else we can also do is hold down command and actually favorite all of the slices simultaneously. 
and we can go back and toggle that off by command clicking again. Now, when you favorite and skip slices as well, that should be taken into consideration if you randomize as well. So they will remain in there. So you can see the randomized beats are changing, but the favorited slices are remaining. Now, once we have a beat we like, we've got some further tweaking we can do using macro controls. So the first one we have is sound variation. This is going to explore different variations on the same pattern. So the further from the middle, the more variation is going to be applied. Pretty wonky. <laughs> and then we have pattern variation, which is going to explore different variations on the same pattern. Same thing applies further away from the middle, more varied. Okay, and then we have three further macro controls down here. Density is going to be controlling how dense or sparse the pattern is. Then we have syncopation for how syncopated the pattern is going to be. So straighter. And then more syncopated. And then we have symmetry, which is going to control how similar the first half of the pattern is going to be to the second. So it's worth experimenting with that to try out different variations. Now with these macro controls, they're actually affecting multiple parameters at the same time. And they're actually also able to reassign which slice is going to be used in a beat. Now if we were to go into the edit page here, which we're going to look at later, and actually go in and create our own beat in here, that will actually kind of reset the macro controls. and They'll then be applicable to the new beat that you've generated yourself. And one more thing I just want to show you here, if you want to have a good reference for how your kind of tweaks are working, you have a great ability just to add a little kick drum underneath here. So you can have a kind of reference for how it sounds against a solid kind of kick drum pulse. We'll look at that in a bit more detail later. Okay, so that's just the kind of scratching the surface approach to this plugin, which is, you know, for a lot of applications going to be more than you need, really. So what we did here was we used the enthusiastic Pika source file that we recorded before. Remember, you can play that from here. More? You can click on individual slices to play them. You can favorite slices that will always be retained within the beat, or you could skip them to make sure they're not going to be in the beat if they're the ones you don't like. You can also randomize here to find yourself a beat that you like. You can browse to get beat patterns this way as well. You can randomize from here too. Once you have a beat that you like, you've got the ability to vary the sound the further the way you go from the middle, the more varied it's going to be. You can vary the pattern. Again, that's going to change the pattern the further away from the middle you go. Density is how dense or sparse it is. Syncopation is the amount of syncopation. Symmetry is how similar the first and second halves of the beat are going to be. Remember, you've got the ability to add in that little 4-4 kick as well, just to give you a kind of rhythmic reference point. Okay, so now we've covered a basic approach to creating a beat. In the next video, we're going to dive into the edit page and look at creating a beat in much more detail. So I'll see you then. Thanks for watching.